If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Each witch would watch which watch belonged to which witch's wrist. Today, I'm going to recap a 1992 action thriller film called Under Siege. In the captain's cabin on USS Missouri, a Marine announces that Chief Casey is there. The captain receives him, saying he must change into his dress uniform, adding if he had as many ribbons as him, he'd wear them to bed. Commander Krill cuts in saying it's a bad idea, and Casey comments for once he agrees with Commander Krill, telling the captain he has 50 gallons of Buila base to prepare for his birthday tomorrow. The captain says fine, telling him not to show his face until the ceremony is over. When Casey is gone, Krill asks the captain why he tolerates that clown of a cook, and the captain says he has no idea and should let him be. The news explains how President Bush has arrived to pay final tribute to the ship and her great history, since the USS Missouri will be decommissioned and embark for San Francisco for her final voyage, where her weaponry will be removed, dismantled, and never fired again. All the while in the kitchen, Casey and other cooks are joking around and having a good time. That evening, they set sail. A sailor says Krill ain't running the ship, the captain must approve all helicopter landings, and another sailor says the captain can't approve a surprise party for himself, pointing at a Playboy magazine, saying she's the surprise. A Marine tells Krill his order to remove and disband the roving patrol will weaken the security of the nuclear weapons aboard, but Krill ignores him and orders him to do it anyway. In the kitchen, Marines enter as Casey and others are having fun. They tell Casey they have orders for the captain's birthday, saying they are having dinner flown in from Hawaii, and that they all must report to the mass deck prior to the helicopter's arrival. Casey says he won't, because he's the only one who cooks for the captain, and if he doesn't like that, he can go speak to the captain. The Marine says it's a surprise, so he can't speak to the captain, and Casey replies neither of the captain, nor he likes surprises, and they leave. The other cooks say Krill will skin him alive, and Casey responds ironically, he's shaking real bad on the thought of Mr. Krill. In the captain's cabin, the captain has summoned Krill, ordering him to explain why they plan to land a helicopter without his authorization. Krill says Admiral Bates has cooked up a surprise for his birthday, and since it's the Admiral's orders, the captain approves. The helicopter has taken off and is on its way. Commander Krill walks into the kitchen, ordering all the cooks to report to the mass deck, except Casey. Krill starts insulting Casey and makes offensive comments about him and the captain. Casey pushes him and Marines yell he can't strike an officer, after which Casey remarks that wasn't striking and shows them what striking an officer really looks like. Krill orders them to put him in the brig, but as Casey informs them they'll need the captain's approval, Krill instead orders them to lock him in the meat locker. Krill tells a new Marine, called Private Nash, that Casey is an extreme psychopath that hates America, saying that if Casey tries to escape, he should shoot him in the head. Meanwhile, the helicopter is arriving. A man called William Stranix tells a girl called Jordan Tate he loves this whole party thing at the sea, and she replies she just hopes she doesn't throw up. They land the helicopter, and as Jordan steps out of it, the Missouri crew is watching on and cheering at the sight. Commander Krill receives her and leads her and the rest of the people that came on the helicopter to inside the ship. Simultaneously, Casey yells and asks Private Nash if it isn't strange they'd put him there instead of in the brig, but Nash ignores him. People welcome Jordan on board, and Krill tells her not to let the guys bother her, leading her to a ward room to change. William appears, and Krill asks him if he's lost, telling him to set up the band. Krill then gives Jordan some pills for her motion sickness, saying the cake will soon be ready, and leaves her to go put on his party dress. Jordan goes into a room, remarking she must be nuts, and then takes several motion sickness pills. In the kitchen, Casey yells to Private Nash, he must take out his pies from the oven. Upstairs, the party is starting, and William is singing. Private Nash says he has orders not to talk to him, and Casey explains to him, while trying to get loose that he could be held accountable for doing this, telling him to go ask the captain if it's acceptable to have him in there. The party continues, and people go around in the machine room serving food. Suddenly, Commander Krill appears having put on women's clothes, and people comment how ridiculous he is. 
Krill yells he will now go and bring down the captain. A cook asks where Chief Casey is and Marines tell him he's locked in the kitchen. Private Nash remarks there's smoke coming from somewhere and Casey yells to him again to take his pies out the oven. Krill arrives at the captain's cabin and once inside, he tells the captain he's his date. In the party room, William asks who is the highest ranking officer and as the operations officer third in command stands up, William picks up a gun and shoots him and suddenly people pick up weapons everywhere. At the same time, Krill picks up a gun, killing the captain and the marine guarding the cabin. In the machine room, they shoot and drag the sailors away. Casey yells he hears gunfire and tells Nash to call the bridge to see what's going on, but Nash remarks it's just music, and Casey replies he must have shit for brains, ordering him to call the captain. Meanwhile, the ship's crew is brought down into the ship. One crew member tries to resist, but is shot. William kills another crew member and tells them all that they'll kill anyone who resists and the person next to them. They are locked inside a large empty compartment and seal the door. Next, all guards outside are killed or taken. In the captain's cabin, as William appears, Krill starts reading the captain's notes on his behavior on the ship, having become increasingly hostile to the crew and recommends a psychological evaluation. He asks William if he thinks it looks like he needs a psychological evaluation, and William answers not at all. Next up, they break into the bridge and walk into the plotting room, totally hijacking the ship. William hands a disc to a Mr. Pitt, telling him to guard it with his life. They conclude they have taken control of the whole ship, having trapped the crew in the forecastle, with a few loose sailors locked up in other non-essential areas. William tells Mr. Pitt to reactivate the weapon system and promotes Krill to captain. In the kitchen, Nash thinks Casey is tricky. Casey says he's not tricky, only freezing, and asks Nash to call the bridge to ask what's going on and to be careful. Nash calls and asks if everything is all right, saying they heard gunshots. Krill answers it was party poppers and firecrackers. William tells him to inform Nash they are sending men to relieve him. William says they're in an unsecured area, asking who they are down there. Krill answers it's a stupid cook and an armed marine, and William sends down two of their mercenaries to handle them. Krill says the marine is armed and thinks they should send down more, but William explains they are professionals, and that the two can handle 20 marines and 100 cooks. Nash tells Casey he's wrong, and that it was firecrackers. Casey responds he for sure has shit for brains, saying if he frees him he'll go and take care of it. Pranged at Nash replies he'll be relieved soon and tells him to shut up. Suddenly, the two mercenaries appear, taking his gun, asking where the cook is, and kills him. They open the refrigerator and start shooting. Casey swiftly appears and knocks down the two of them, locking them inside. He takes the keys to the handcuffs, and the mercenaries start shooting to get out. Casey turns off the lights, and as the two come out, they have a hard time navigating through the kitchen. Casey takes his throwing knife, with which he takes out one of them, after which he jumps out and quickly takes out the second one. He picks up their gear and weapons, and starts preparing something that he puts in the microwave, which he turns on. In the plotting room, they hear that an F-18 has been sent to look for the chopper. Meanwhile, Casey has reached the captain's cabin, seeing the dead captain, who he covers with the captain's dress uniform. Outside, William and the others watch intently as the F-18 appears, and in the plotting room, they lock onto the F-18, firing and shooting it down, and Krill gives a toast, and they start celebrating. A man called Tom Breaker from the CIA has been summoned by Admiral Bates, who is having William on the phone. William threatens to kill the crew and retaliate with everything in the ship's arsenal if any ship or aircraft approach within 100 miles, repeating the launch codes for 32 Tomahawks on board. They ask what his objective is, but William ignores their question and continues talking, making threats and acts totally insane, after which he hangs up. Mr. Breaker explains to Admiral Bates that William worked for them, until they cancelled the operation and tried to take down William with it since he was insane. William orders Mr. Pitt to fire, and they send a missile. Everyone on the ship hears it, and soon after, the missile hits its target. Admiral Bates and the others remark William took out their satellite relay. They make a phone call to the White House to wake up the president. 
Inside the ship, they are working to break apart beams, which they are lifting up and out of the ship, all of which Casey sees from underneath them. A few moments later, Casey has reached the mast deck, where he sees a few dead marines and sailors. He pushes a big cake aside, and suddenly, music starts and Jordan appears, dancing, and Casey yells to her to shut the music off. He takes her inside a room, and Jordan cries, asking what happened to the dead people. Casey asks who she is, and she explains she's Jordan Tate, Miss July 89, and that she became motion sick and took some pills, from which she must have fallen asleep. He asks how many there were on the helicopter, and she replies it was full, but doesn't know exactly. Jordan then asks if he's some special forces guy or something, and he replies he's just a cook, and she exclaims, Oh my god, we're gonna die. People list all the weapons and ammunition still on board USS Missouri for Admiral Bates, including eight nuclear-tipped tomahawks. Admiral Bates asks Mr. Breaker who this William is, and Breaker answers they funded him and his private army for a special operation to take out by sinking a North Korean nuclear weapons submarine and used his insane creative thinking to get the job done. However, as they realized he became a threat, they tried to neutralize him, but missed. On the ship, William is communicating with people on a submarine, telling them where to meet. Suddenly, a mercenary tells William two in their team are missing, and Krill starts saying he told him they should have sent down more men. Casey puts Jordan in a locker, saying she'll be safe, but she starts screaming, and Casey has to explain to her what happens if anybody hears her. She begs him to let her come with him. Casey explains that if she is coming with him, she's got to be invisible, and says he will give her a gun if the worst would happen. William, Krill, and a few others reach the kitchen, and William comments from what he sees that a professional killed his men. Krill tries to convince him Casey is a moron, but William doesn't buy it. Suddenly, the microwave starts beeping, and William yells at everyone to get down. The microwave explodes, and moments afterwards, William remarks, this is no ordinary cook. He tells Krill he wants to see the file on this simple cook. The Admiral and other high-ranking officers make up a plan to send SEAL teams to take out USS Missouri's radar and weapon systems, and if they fail, they'll launch an airstrike and destroy the entire ship. Krill finds Casey's file, not in personnel, but in the captain's private cabinet. It says Casey is ex-SEAL, expert in martial arts, explosives, weapons, tactics, having received a Silver Star, Navy Cross, and Purple Heart with Cluster. A soldier appears saying two more in their team are missing. Jordan complains, asking why she has to carry everything, and Casey tells her he'll gladly carry if she kills whoever they run into. Suddenly, Casey tells her to stay, and he'll be back in just a minute. He goes outside, taking down some guards, and goes to fetch some type of equipment, jumping into a lifeboat and setting up some parabolic antenna. Meanwhile, William's men are welding things all over the ship. Casey gets back to Jordan and uses the equipment to contact the Admiral. He explains to them Commander Krill is working with William and that they are professionals, creating some railing system to offload tomahawks. They tell him they want him to coordinate his efforts with them and wait for the strike team. Jordan remarks he's no cook, and Casey replies he also cooks. Next, the two go out on the deck, and Casey tells her to hide while he runs to the helicopter all the mercenaries arrived in. Meanwhile, somewhere else on deck, William asks Krill what he'll do when he gets $200 million in his bank from the Tomahawks, and he answers he'll buy the presidency. Casey uses a highly flammable and a grenade to create a simple time bomb. Suddenly, mercenaries notice him and start shooting. He quickly grabs a wire and jumps overboard, after which the helicopter explodes. Casey makes his way from the place on the exterior as someone else just finds Jordan. She starts screaming she doesn't know anything, and suddenly Casey appears, taking down and killing the mercenaries to save her. The two run inside, and Casey prepares a trap. As the others try to follow them, the hatch explodes. William comments the cook is a pain in the ass, and Krill says he knows what to do. Next, Krill explains there's a fire sprinkler in the forecastle, and if they turn it on, Casey will kill himself trying to save all the people that will drown inside as the compartment floods. As Casey and Jordan make their way through the ship, 
they suddenly hear Morse code, someone knocking on the walls. Casey picks up a welding machine, starts working on a hatch, which people inside get worried about, and then kicks the door in. They are all pleased to see him, and Casey starts explaining the situation, handing out guns. Suddenly, in the plotting room, they think there's a power surge, and in an electric control room somewhere, Casey and the others conclude the weapon system will be disabled within a half hour. Immediately after, Krill is heard all over the ship, telling Casey to look to the nearest ship monitor, and shows how the crew is panicking as the water is rising, shooting a guy. Casey comments they have to save them. One of them remarks they will have a trap, but Casey responds they are not expecting all of them, and they begin working on a plan. Next up, they start taking out and distracting guards close to the forecastle, and then turn off the water flow to the fire sprinklers. Suddenly, in the middle of the shooting, Admiral Bates calls and Jordan answers. They wonder who she is and ask where Casey is, and she tells them they're in a gunfight. She hands Casey the device, and Admiral Bates remarks he totally disobeyed his orders of waiting for backup. Casey answers he's sorry, and says they may court-martial him if he lives. Admiral Bates informs him the SEAL team is en route, and authorizes him to do whatever he needs to do to aid in the arrival of the SEAL team, and then hangs up to let them focus on the fight. Casey makes advances, running through the ship, killing mercenaries while trying to get to the deck. Suddenly, Jordan exclaims she won't stay back, and starts running after Casey, all while the others yell at her to stay. When Casey asks what she's doing, she responds the safest place on the ship is behind him. The two slowly make their way up, fighting men they meet. The SEAL team is closing in, and Mr. Pitt sees them. William tells him to kill them, but when trying, the weapon system doesn't work, and suddenly, the whole system dies. William makes a call to the submarine. Hearing helicopters, Casey tells Jordan that now the good guys are coming. However, suddenly, RPGs are shot from the submarine, and the choppers are blown to smithereens. Admiral Bates concludes they have no choice but to launch a full air assault. William and the others find dead members of their team, and William speaks out loud they should have hired this cook. Whatever the price would have been, it would have been worth it. While they have started offloading tomahawks to the submarine, Jordan is helping Casey somewhere in the ship to dismantle hand grenades and other weapons to create some type of bomb. Casey then makes his way from the ship down into the water and then to the submarine. People, however, see him and start shooting at him, and one person hits him with an anchor. He plants the bomb, blows it, and swims back to the ship. Being badly hurt, he's not ready when a guy appears with a gun, and just before Casey is about to be shot, Jordan appears and kills the guy. William and Krill are informed they no longer can submerge. Krill says he'll fix the damage, and William says he will go and make Hawaii glow in the dark. Meanwhile, Jordan helps Casey with the injury. Mr. Pitt tells William the weapon system is dead and remarks it's hopeless. William picks up a gun, and Mr. Pitt immediately changes his attitude and becomes more optimistic. Casey and Jordan meet up with the others. They all look at the submarine and discuss how they will take it out. Casey points at the big guns on the deck and says they still have shells for those. Suddenly, Mr. Pitt gets the system working again, saying they'll have full control of the weapons in a few minutes. Simultaneously, Casey and the others are loading the big guns. First, they fire Starburst. William runs out to look what's happening, and Krill laughs, saying they have no shells that can hurt them. Casey and the others change the angle of the guns and fire, this time a real shell, creating some real noise, but unfortunately misses. Krill and the mercenaries quickly fix the damage temporarily and shout they have to dive. Casey and the others reload and adjust the angle of the guns. They fire, and while Krill repeats to himself that Casey is dead to comfort himself, they make a direct hit. William gets so furious, he starts acting insane, talking about cartoons he liked to watch on Saturdays as little. His men mention they can light up Hawaii now, and William yells at everybody to get out. William launches two tomahawks and sits down in a chair and starts signing. The Admiral is informed about the launch and that the tomahawks will reach Honolulu in 24 minutes. The CIA agents tell each other they'll blame everything on the cook. Casey asks Jordan to run and get the communications device. 
Jordan reaches the lifeboat with another guy to grab the device, all while Casey bumps into some mercenaries and starts shooting them down and fighting them. Meanwhile, F-18s take off to intercept the Tomahawks. Casey reaches the plotting room, but is suddenly stopped by William. Suddenly, William comments it has been a long time since they saw each other last time, and Casey answers it sure has, calling him sir. William leads him through the room, showing him how he has sabotaged the systems so the Tomahawks can't be stopped, and explains he has the key, but that the lock is broken. They have a short conversation in which William talks insanity. Suddenly, Casey attacks him, and the two start fighting with knives. They are both very good, but Casey is somewhat better, and just a minute into the fight, William slips, and Casey takes the key. Meanwhile, one of the F-18s manages to shoot down one of the Tomahawks. Casey contacts the Admiral, who explains there is one Tomahawk left. Chief Casey loads the disc, and the high-ranking officers read a code number for him to plug in. Casey inputs the number, and suddenly, at the last minute, the Tomahawk is eliminated. They start celebrating, but then Casey sees bombers approaching them, and informs the Admiral not to forget to call off the air assault. The Admiral calls it off, and next up, Casey and the others free the rest of the crew that is locked up. Later on deck, a doctor tells Casey he'll need to stitch his injury, and Casey jokingly says he's afraid of needles. They ask Casey jokingly to show a move, and he shows them one. In the last scene, as they have reached San Francisco, they all pay tribute to their fallen friends. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.